Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honors, and glory to the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah, Bahasham, Recha HaKodash. Double honors as always to the apostles, the elders, and the sincere Akim of Great Millstone who rule well, who teach well, who we learn the truth from daily. And a sincere salutation as always to the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel, as well as the scattered Israelite foreigners, the speckled bird, the Israelites scattered among the heathen that look like the heathen. And this is a quick one that came to me in the spirit that I wanted to get into. And I think I'm going to title this Double Honors to Those That Rule Well. And it came to me in the spirit just, you know, meditating on the current the current topic about this whole Chief Ephraim thing and the Wi-Fi with the pro-Palestine protests conflict that they got going on. Just, you know, the folly that they about to get themselves into and the fact that had it not been for Yahweh Basham, Yahweh Shai, putting his Rechak Wadash on the apostles and elders of Great Millstone and those that teach the like doctrine, the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel would be left without wise counsel. So I'm going to go ahead and prove that with this scripture right here. Well, I'm going to start off with the scripture right here. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 17, and it reads, Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. For the scripture saith, Thou shalt not muzzle the ox that treadeth out the corn. And... This part, red letter, so this is Lord Yahweh speaking, whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. The laborer is worthy of his reward. Alright, so this right here, for any um, newer Akim, Wa Akwath, that would be brothers and sisters, who are Hebrew Israelites, according to the tribe of your father, the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. Who are the Hebrew Israelites according to the Holy Scriptures? This right here is why you hear um, the Great Millstone, as well as the camps that teach the like doctrine, open up with um, essentially saying all praises to Yahweh, Basham Yahweh Shai, Basham Rechah Kodash, and double honors to the apostles and the elders in the sincere argument of Great Millstone. Because <clears throat> once you get the scriptures, you understand that like a lot of uh, like I've been getting into a lot more recently and a lot of the Akim and the elders have been getting into a lot. The Heavenly Father, contrary to a lot of the fairy tales and the fables you get from the Christian church, he's not going to come down from heaven to correct you. I believe uh, the beloved brother of Matthew Eyes from Yahweh would have said it earlier in this video I was watching. So the water of that brother. And Yahweh Bashim Yahshai Barakatha, he said, The Heavenly Father Yahweh is not going to come down from heaven and be like, Hey, niggas, y'all fucking up. This is what y'all need to do. No, the Heavenly Father, he's not going to come down from his throne on high and <laughs> lower himself to telling you niggas to stop fucking up. He, he already delegated that to his servants, the prophets. And that may, put, that may be off put into a lot of people that aren't learned in the scriptures. And it may sound arrogant or maybe even what some would call narcissistic. But if you have a thorough understanding of the scriptures, you'll understand why certain men will proclaim that they're prophets. And on top of that, you also have to get the definition of what it means to be a prophet. So let me pull that out in the Edamon online. All right. Prophet. <sighs> Late 12th century. Iron $340 person who speaks last for the year most high. One who foretells. Upside is a cashback app preachers. that lets you earn money on groceries, Prophet. gas, and dining. Soon it's easy to use. Just sign up, right. add your payment so, option, and select offers you know, near you. Certain boom, parts of that. Cash back. You can really earn definition. money by spending money you'll be spending anyway. Download Upside but, today. Person who speaks for the most high, one who foretells, that's essentially the definition for what it means to be a prophet. And to prophesy means to say before, 
let me see if they have it in the Edamon online. And if not, we can get that in the blue letter. Prophesy. Verb. Speak by divine so inspiration, foretell really future events. Alright. So essentially, yeah, to prophesy means you say to before. You say something before it's going to happen. When... When the Apostle John, who later became, you know, who we co who we refer to today as John the Revelator, the one who wrote the book of Revelations. When he got into what we have, when he started to write down what we have today as Revelations, the 13th chapter. And I'm going to just go ahead and get that. Oh, wrong button. It's a lock here. Revelations, the 13th chapter. I'm going to start at I'm going to start at verse 16. Revelation chapter 13, verse 16 and it reads, "And he causeth all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name." <coughs> When the when the Apostle John wrote this, it would have had to have been roughly 2,000 years ago. And now we see that this prophecy is literally knocking at the door. The charagma itself is the implantable device. It is indeed the micro CHIP. And now you can get it in the news where in certain states here in America, Babylon the Great, you got certain women that's already purchasing stuff in the store using their hands. So this prophecy that we were given by Yahweh Bashem Yahushah through his servant, the Apostle John, it shows us that true prophets of the Lord are always going to tell you things before they happen. They'll tell you things whether you hear for bear, which is why when I open up with my videos, I say whether you hear for bear when I'm referring to the apostles and the elders who told us the truth and the sincere Archeum who are possibly up and coming elders themselves who have labored in the doctrine. Whether you hear for bear, whether you like it or not, it's going to play itself out, which is why, <clears throat> which is why the scriptures also teach us how to identify real prophets sent by Yahweh Bashem Yahushai and how to identify false prophets. All right. So I didn't want to get too much into the MOTB right about now, but I pulled out that scripture to give you a good example for those that's in the know and those that know how to discern the sign of the times. <coughs> Salakia. I pulled that scripture out just to bring the point home as to why we give double honors to the apostles and the elders. Because they rule well. They gave, they give wise counsel. And all throughout this entire um this entire, you know I don't know what to even call it at this point. It's just like this entire stupid scenario about going out round two, calling all camps. We if you pull up your honorary pull up boy, all this dumb shit. If the if the apostles and the elders weren't dropping videos, basically all of Israel, any so-called Negro, Latino, Native American who knows that they that they are actually a Hebrew Israelite would just be flood in Chicago or wherever the wherever this clown Eph, Chief Ephraim said to meet up and go at some damn Ishmaelites for no reason. When if you think about it, they Wi-Fi whoever they violated first. They weren't operating in wisdom. Nothing in the scriptures tells you to meddle in the affairs of the heathen, like you know. The scripture says using the world but not abusing it and these motherfuckers definitely just you know love abusing the world and they want everybody to hop to their defense like you know like a fucking adulterous woman just like you know wipe your mouth and say i've done no wickedness like eat at the plate wipe your mouth say i've done no wickedness but that shit but that's not going to work because yahweh bashim yahweh shah he's going to preserve his hopeful elect and that's why that's why i dropped a video recently titled Order is vital in the ministry. No more simps because without order, without true leaders, without true elders and apostles set up by Yahweh Bashem Yahushai and given the Chakwadash to properly teach us and edify us and exhort us and rebuke us when need be, 
we would be out there doing all types of folly. We would find ourselves in situations that we can't get out of. We find ourselves in real sticky, precarious situations following behind a nigga that just so happens to know he an Israelite. And Jake has a habit. That's why the scriptures liken the scriptures liken the flock of Israel unto sheep, because like the brothers say, like the sincere Akim always say, sheep are docile animals, but they're borderline retarded. If you don't properly lead them, they'll they'll be doing some stupid shit. And they'll they'll be <laughs> they'll be led to the slaughter before they can even realize what the fuck even went on. Which is why which is why the scriptures also says I hate typing this word. I really do. Call her lawyer, my yeah. How about some yo I think I just had it. Let me see if I can get it in the other app. Sometimes these apps get real particular with the way you type a scripture and they won't show it to you. It gets it gets irritating, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, there we go. Call Lloyd Mlaya, how about Shamiel Shah? First Corinthians chapter 11, verse one, and it reads, be ye followers of me, even also as I, Salakia, even also, Salakia, I'm, I'm, I'm moving too fast. Let me calm down. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse one, and it reads, be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Hamashiach. All right. And this is, this is another reason why we give double honors to the apostles and the elders. This isn't a, it's not a fucking popularity competition, man. I know you know, Jake got a habit of thinking that that's all it is because the more, I, I would say, like, well-known camps like an IUIC and an ISUBK and a Sakari, like, you know, all these different camps that go out of their way that, like, advertise themselves and, you know, shoot to try to reach the most subscriber counts or mega church status, they become more known. So you see their example more frequently and you think that's all there is to being a Hebrew Israelite. And that's not the case. You know, because of, you know, camps like that, I didn't even know that I didn't even know that Great Millstone was a camp up until a few years ago. But as soon as I heard the doctrine, you know, despite the fact that I was listening to multiple different lone wolf Israelites, when I finally heard the doctrine and I studied the scriptures myself and I, you know, went back and forth and I was watching the videos and I would pull out scriptures as I'm listening. I would, in the spirit, I was just like, this is it. You know, like how about Shmuel Shai? He finally, you know, took the wool off my eyes, and I was able to see that. I was able to see all the inconsistencies in the way that everybody else was teaching, and even you know how other Hebrew Israelites, whether they be camps or lone wolf Israelites or you know social media Israelites like the Yisraelites or the Yah Israelites, you can always see that how they operate in the world is different from how the apostles and elders teach you to operate in the world if you actually take heed to the 144 percent doctrine and the doctrine comes from yahweh bashem yahweh Shai, which is why the scripture says rightly dividing the word of truth it's important to do that you cannot just follow somebody because they're telling you what you want to hear man like like brothers have been getting into a lot especially today even more so you can't be you can't try to bring the old man into the truth you got to put off the old man and Put on that new man. You got to be a new creature in Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, whom the world regularly calls Christ Jesus. You cannot be trying to find a way to fit niggerism into the truth, you know. And the scriptures already liken the whole entire nation of Israel unto a comely and delicate woman that is the wife of the heavenly father, Yahweh. So that being the case. The scriptures liken us unto that, not, not for any carnal weirdo reasons like the heavenly father wants to you know lay with us no that's not what that is this is it's a spiritual thing but the heavenly father through his servants the prophets he gives you a 
carnal example of what he of what he of his relationship to us so we can understand it and we can start and those of the hopeful elect can start to understand why the heavenly father put us in captivity for going off for sinning against him for worshiping other gods because worshiping other gods and disobeying the heavenly father in any way is the same thing as if you were a man you were a man of israel you were a hebrew israelite man from any of the any of the prospective 12 tribes and you have a wife or even multiple wives and you tell them to do something they say okay everything that you said i'm gonna do lord because you know in ancient times in our customs it was it was normal for our wives to call us lord because we we are the closest thing to the heavenly father that our wives are going to get that's the order the heavenly father set up so they say they're going to do everything that you tell them to do and then one of them one day decides to just you know go around flirting with dudes and stuff like that and another one says oh i would never do you like that you know trying to put herself above the one that you know was going off and then she starts doing the same shit after she says she wouldn't do it that's how that's why the heavenly father fucks us up that's why i used to fuck us up as a group because essentially that analogy or that parable i just gave is what we did to the heavenly father spiritually when you worship other gods when you disobey what he tells you to do that's the, that's the same thing as that that's why he hates idolatry that's why idolatry is likened unto adultery and rebelliousness is as the sin of witchcraft you can get that in the book of uh i believe first samuel in the fifth i think it's first samuel chapter 15 round about the 20th verse i think let me make sure i'm not telling y'all wrong yep not the 20th verse but it's the 22nd verse call hello i'm like how about shamil chef First Samuel chapter 15, verse 22, and it reads, And Samuel said, Hath Yahweh as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of Yahweh? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. Verse 23, For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of Yahweh, he has also rejected thee from being king. Yeah, and this right here, the prophet Samuel told this to King Saul, after Saul had returned from the slaughter of Amalek, Yahweh Shah commanded King Saul to put all of the Amalekites to death because of they because they was being wicked. And the Amalekites today are the so-called J O J O S, you know, the the you wish people, the the Mad Hatters, the small hats, the ones pretending to be us, basically. So Amalek is basically the head tribe of Edom. Amalek is to the Edomites, what Judah is to the Israelites. Judah is the head tribe of, of Israel. Out of all the 12 tribes, Judah is the head tribe chosen by Yahweh Bashem Yahushah. So essentially, the Heavenly Father wanted Saul, to make a long story short, to knock off Amalek, to delete Amalek, as well as all of the livestock, all of that, because it was defiled and because Amalek was wicked. So Saul basically did his own thing. He fucked them up, but he took Agag, the king of Amalek, as a hostage, and he took like a large ass amount of livestock to try to offer up to the heavenly, heavenly father as a burnt offering and the heavenly father he was displeased with that so he talked to samuel he said i regret making saul king you know and basically give him this message and this is the message that samuel gave to him from yahweh bashim yahushai the heavenly father takes obedience very seriously so for any of you jakes that feels like okay uh i'm gonna do you know the, the heavenly father he won't like if i do this not if it's not if it's directly opposed to what he just told you to do and even if it's not directly opposed or opposite of what he told you to do you need to make sure that you just don't do it if it if it doesn't you need to really analyze what you get told like if you get the instructions this is why the scripture says study to show yourself approved you can't just be doing shit because you feel like doing it just like these jakes that want to unite all israel that shit, that shit would sound good if this was a fucking pro-black movement, but this is not a fucking pro-black movement. This isn't another fad to hop on. I, I say this frequently because I get irritated with how Jake... Jake takes everything for a fucking joke and they take everything as a fucking fad. Like, I believe one of the elders got into recently, like, like niggas ain't learned from the Black Panthers. Like, this isn't about trying to go to war with... Uh, no, yeah, I believe the uh, beloved elder Apostle Rakhal got into it um, when I watched this video earlier, or maybe yesterday. He said, didn't you niggas learn from the Black Panthers and the, um, 
And it was another group he said that I think was probably like, he mentioned like a Gadite group that was similar to the Black Panthers. But yeah, basically, like, didn't you learn from them? They try to go to war with Esau and all this other type of stuff. Esau, you know, you can't go to war with Esau because his blessing is the sword. That's not to say Jake ain't warriors, but it's not about, the, the battle is not carnal anymore with us. It's spiritual. So that being the case, when you try to unite all Israel, you going off because the Lord, he didn't say anything about uniting all of Israel on this side. There's prophecies that have to play out in the chronological order that the Heavenly Father set them up. And that's why the scripture said, let all things be done decently and in order. That scripture can be, can be applied to nearly every, every aspect of the scriptures from the ceremonial laws to the dietary laws to the moral laws, the civil laws, the sacrificial laws. And we understand Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, he fulfilled the sacrificial law. But now the sacrifices us offering our bodies up as a living sacrifice. So even more attention now is put on us rehearsing the righteous acts, being obedient, properly applying Yahweh Shah Hamashiach's grace that he's given us and not just doing what the fuck we want to do. We can't do our own thing. If the Heavenly Father said nothing about uniting all Israel, you don't do it. And if the Heavenly Father said, let me just go ahead and get that too. I'm not going to butcher no scriptures. I'm going to do my best to not butcher any scriptures out of one righteous are from this point on. Romans chapter 16, verse 17. And it reads, Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. And which doctrine have we learned? We've learned the doctrine of Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, the real doctrine, not the Christian church doctrine, because they don't even touch the Bible. The real doctrine, which is, yes, Yahweh Shah does not include all people. He's not Jesus Christ, that made up fictional character. You might as well be believing in Hercules from Disney. Yahweh Shah does not include all people, and he has no problem not dealing with Israelites that ain't right. He didn't he didn't sit right there trying to come together with the Pharisees. If there was righteous Pharisees that understood his doctrine and they repented of that bullshit, then yeah, Yahweh Shah would he would teach them, you know. But that gets into, you know, you being meek, you coming correct. You can't just be coming at a elder, you know what I'm saying, who who's like who labored, not like who definitely labored in the doctrine. Who consistently stands stiffly for the names of Yahweh Ba Shem Yahweh Shah? When you got clowns talking about, you can call the Heavenly Father what you want. Your clowns prophesying with a, with they hat with their heads covered when the scriptures clearly says that's a shame unto a man. And that goes into your that goes into you offering your body up as a living sacrifice. There's things you can do that like even under the first covenant, there was things you could do to your burnt offering that would profane your sacrifice. If the Heavenly Father says you bring me a ram of the first year, a male ram without blemish, and you bring him a, a, a fucking a five year old ram, you know, I don't know how I don't know the age, you know, I don't know what like what's considered an old ram, like elderly versus a young one. But let's just say rams live like a maximum of like 11 years or something like that. You bring the Heavenly Father an 11 year old ram that's on his last leg about the fucking croak, <laughs> about, the, about the bleed his last bleat. And that thing got liver spots on it and some more shit. He might fucking kill you like he did Nadab and Abihu when they offered up strange fire. The Heavenly Father, like all these dudes trying to claim alpha male, like trying to go out here and have fights with, with Ishmaelites and stuff at protests that ain't got nothing to do with them. Don't understand that the Heavenly Father, he he is he's the ultimate when it comes to what you want to call alpha male ener energy, whatever you want to call it. He's the ultimate alpha male. That's You get the... You only reason you even got the ability to even like conceive Alpha anything is because of the Heavenly Father making you in his image. But you can't match how Alpha he is. Like you can't even he I said it before, Yahweh, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh is so Alpha, you can't like in the flesh, Jake will do things to make, you know what I'm saying, women like them. The Heavenly Father is so Alpha, he has to allow you to like him. He has to allow you to accept him. He has to allow you to disobey him. He has to put the spirit on you to be righteous and put the spirit on you to be wicked. And he's so and he's so what you would want to call alpha that if you offer up a sacrifice he didn't ask for, he considers it strange fire and he'll, he can kill you on the spot. Like he's not even he's not even going to consider it. He's like like I don't, I don't know this, nor do I know you. <laughs> Delete it. Or you can just do the right thing. And present yourself the way he wants you. If he says, okay, for you to be a living sacrifice unto me that follows my my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased, Yahweh Shai, 
then if he was perfect in the law, you do your best to be perfect in the law and you follow him. If Yahweh Shah wasn't out here wearing fucking hats, prophesying and teaching, you don't wear no fucking hat. And I understand sometimes, you know, depending on where brothers preach and prophesy, that it's actually like cold in those regions. That's different. That's where you properly apply your Howard Shai. You got to be circumspect like the scriptures tell you to do. You don't just, you know, if you know it's going to rain outside, you bring umbrellas. You do, you know what I'm saying? You do your due diligence with that. You wear rain boots, whatever you got to do so you ain't out there messed up. Do what you can to keep on pushing the word, especially if it's camp. But if you... And if you inside or whatever, you don't need to do none of that. You, that means you, you know what I'm saying? You're not doing what you can do once you can do it. That's, that's that Cain shit, offering up a wicked sacrifice. You know what the Heavenly Father requires, and you're trying to go up your own way. You feeling like, okay, this that's a little too tedious. When Lord Yahweh clearly said, He that breaks any of these least commandments and teaches men to do so, he shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. So that means you're going to be counted a two-third. I said it before when I made my first video. You don't want to be... I don't, me personally, I can't speak for the rest of Jake, but I don't want to be counted as one of those that the Heavenly Father had to wink at my ignorance half the time. And then the other time, the other half of the time, I'm just basically, you know, I, I just barely make it into the kingdom. Like, you don't want to be what, <laughs> what Elder Manati Zagba calls a nutsack Israelite because the two thirds are going to be destroyed on this side and they got to come back to the loins of the elect. That means you're going to miss, like, one of the, I think Elder Manati Zagba or one of the other elders may have said it. But essentially, you, they don't really get into what that possibly means. That means you'll possibly miss all of the good stuff. You'll miss Esau getting a foot put in his ass. You'll miss coming down off the chariots with Yahweh Shai and knocking off, you know what I'm saying, all of the wicked that don't want to serve Lord Yahweh Shai. You'll miss putting your foot in the heathen ass and making them build up the kingdom. You'll miss all of the good stuff. And you come in on the back end. You, you can't even say that you had anything righteous to do. You, like, you really didn't earn the kingdom. You literally came in on the count of the fact that the Heavenly Father, he swore by his name because there's nothing greater than he swore by his name that he wouldn't forget his covenant with our fathers, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. And you got Jake that don't understand that you cannot go up your own way. It's no point of you getting into arguments with Ishmaelites about nothing that it don't pertain us. I have one more scripture that just came to me in the spirit. Let me see. Ben as Sodom. Call Hello Yahweh Ba Sham Yahweh Shah. Isaiah chapter one verse nine. And it reads, Except Yahweh of hosts had left uh, unto us a very small remnant, we should have been as Sodom, and we would have been like unto Gomorrah. Yeah, because without without the Heavenly Father putting the, the spirit on the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone and those that teach the like doctrine. We would have been destroyed. It would doesn't like this scripture doesn't mean we would have all been peanut butter chasers like Elder Hawaii calls it. No, it means we would have been destroyed like Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah to this day, like the scripture says, it's a memorial of destruction. It's a, it's a memorial of basically, you know, wicked motherfuckers that want to go against Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. It's like if you think Sodom and Gomorrah, you think of a city that was doing basically fuck shit and then they became <laughs> they became a nuclear testing ground. They did a, I think they said some scientists did a, a, a re, some research. People did a test on it, and they said the soil has radiation levels that's still higher than any place on this planet to this day, or something along those lines. But yeah, essentially, we would have been through. And you can see that when you see dudes out here calling all camps, calling all camps, no context, no nothing, ignoring Romans chapter sixteen verse seventeen. If you know damn well you've been treating the apostles and elders a great millstone, and those that teach the like doctrine like shit. If you know damn well, once those great allegations came out and you niggas was co-signing it, if you know every time the apostles and elders try to show you love according to the scriptures that Yahweh Bashim Shai gave us, and they try to rebuke you so you going off doesn't result in you being judged, and you niggas talk shit and you buck back and you want to side with vocab and all of the all of your actual opposition, you you want to side with your real ops when your brothers of when your brothers of your same nation and of the faith are trying to teach you what to do. Because you got a fucking ego problem and niggas got hurt pussies and shit. Then fuck no, nobody's about to pull up because you niggas want to keep being stupid. That's the same thing. Like I said, this is the same thing as a wicked, adulterous woman. That's the same spirit as a wicked, adulterous woman. Eat at the plate, wipe with her mouth, say, I've done no wickedness. No. And that's that same spirit that Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah hates. That's why he's going to destroy two thirds on his side. So for those of the hopeful elect, we got to keep. 
bait we have to keep making sure that we seek diligence to make our call in election sure you can't just know you're a hebrew israelite like one of the like one of the Akim said earlier that's basic shit don't start worshiping a dude just because he's a nigga that knows he's a hebrew israelite like don't Jake has that low bar. Like, Jake's been so fucked up by Esau. They have a low-ass bar of what makes somebody great and what makes them a prophet or a righteous man. Like, these motherfuckers, they may be right about a few things here or there, but it doesn't make them prophets. You got to be able to, like, yeah, you can break down, okay, such and such might happen on a global scale. Okay, cool. Such and such might happen on a national scale. Okay, cool. But what about basic wisdom? These niggas don't apply that. They want to be niggas. These motherfuckers be grown-ass men with gray in their beard. So carnally, you would think, okay, they got the Hebrews like, look, he must know some shit. Nah, these motherfuckers be stupid. You got brothers that may not have a beard that know may, way more than them, and the Heavenly Father's dealing with them over the brothers that got beards because the Heavenly Father, he don't, he told Samuel when he was looking for the next king of Israel, after he basically said Saul's not going to be king, he sent the prophet Samuel to Jesse. Jesse had seven sons, and all of his sons, they were like young men. They all had a certain look about them, but you know. Essentially, the, the Heavenly Father told Samuel, don't look on his outward appearance because, you know, essentially the Heavenly Father doesn't judge like men do. So he revealed that the king, the next king was going to be Jesse's youngest son, which was who we know today as King David. So the Lord don't care about the outward appearance. Like, yeah, if you if you have the ability to grow a beard, don't be out here fucking shaving your beard. That's going off. But if you don't, but you preaching the word, that means Heavenly Father is dealing with you. The same thing that goes into physical circumcision. You can be physically circumcised, but be out here doing nigga shit. So, yeah, man, like leadership is important. And like giving double the last aspect I want to get into about giving double honors is. Only the hopeful elect is going to do it anyway, so I'm not talking to a two third. So but for any hopeful elect that's like on the fence about it, like I was like some years ago because I didn't understand it. And I didn't even know the scripture on it. Given double honors, it also keeps you meek and humble because the scripture says the meek will inherit the earth. And it also keeps it also puts things in perspective like it's always a constant reminder. Anytime you think you hot shit. Because you got Jake's out of the line say, well, I, I didn't learn from anybody. I just happened to know. It's like, shut the fuck up. You lying like hell. Everybody learned from one West. Those are the first people out there on the forefront, you know, on, on the highways and hedges, starting camps, teaching and pushing the word. Like the scripture said. And because the word doesn't return unto the heavenly father void, it bore fruit. You had a bunch of other camps that branched off from one west, whether they going off or doing righteous. It came from one west. And because they kept on spreading the word, then you had the, you had people that had the, the luxury of watching them on YouTube and then trying to start their own YouTube channel, learn a little bit from this camp, a little bit from that camp, a little bit from the original one west. And then say, oh, I've been in the truth 10 years like. Niggas, Jake is clowns. Don't don't ever get it fucked up because of Jake. No, he's a Hebrew. It's like niggas, niggas are still clowns. Jake, Jake is still Jake. Unless unless an individual has proven himself to not be a two third, and he's constantly seeking diligence to make his call in election. Sure, don't like don't do that. This is why the Most High says he's no respecter of persons. That's an example we're supposed to follow. Follow those that follow Hamashiach, and you got to study. To show yourself approved, always constantly get into the scriptures. Do not fall for cult of personality. Don't fall for, oh, well, these are heathens, so I got to go at them. No, the fuck you don't. Be wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove. And when a man's ways please it, Yahweh Bashim Shah, he maketh even the enemy to be at peace with him. It's plenty of times we had our, our righteous forefathers, they was in heathen lands, and they had to move a certain way. You couldn't be all gung-ho trying to be fucking John Rambo. And you in a heathen land like David, when he had to flee, Saul, he went into the land of the Philistines. This is after he killed Goliath. And they heard about David's reputation. David had to play insane. So they were just like, all right, they wouldn't be on that type of time of trying to fuck him up. Paul used righteous God with the gripper. But these niggas, they don't they don't got wisdom and understanding, bro. That's why it's important to really understand how order keeps things Order keeps things together. That's why you how about Shemuel Shah, he's all about order. He deals with both sides, order and chaos. But for the sake of his hopeful elect, who he loves, who he chastens as sons, he receives his sons, he wants us to be in order. And you can't expect, you know, you can't bring that nigga energy into the ministry where it's like, okay, niggas will do shit. Niggas will fucking trespass against you and expect you to just fucking help them. 
mm, salak you and expect you to just help them because they're in trouble without any apology, without any accountability on their part. And if you do, and if you do help them, they're just going to fucking violate you again. And then eventually in the world, a same worldly nigga would learn to be circumspect and not help that nigga. How much more in the ministry when it's life and death, when the words that you say offend niggas on levels you're not even, you won't, that you couldn't even fathom. Niggas will act like they cool with you, but still be offended that you rebuke them. Then start bearing false witness against you. Especially if it's like you don't teach the same doctrine like you basically a demon. And you going, you going out your way to go off. So who the fuck, who the fuck in their right mind that you how about Shmiao Shah is dealing with will sit right in and help a bunch of niggas that talk shit. And, and that's a test run. Like if you sit right there and accuse your brethren of being grapists when they brought out a law about the consequences of grape, how much more are you going to like, <laughs> why would they not expect you to turn them over to Esau? Let's say great millstone was to go out there to this stupid ass fucking round two bullshit that these retards is getting into any great millstone or any camp to teach like doctrine not going out there no way through the spirit and power of your how about shy but say they were to go out there you you the same niggas that fucking bore false witness you the same niggas that go on vocab's channel just because you don't like great millstone checking you for being, for going off and the same niggas that's insecure because you feel like oh great millstone for like they oh so righteous it's not about them being oh so righteous they just doing what yahweh shy told them to do and you can literally do the same thing if you stop being a fucking nigga, if you stop being like Cain, but it's not your lot to do so because the Heavenly Father ain't dealing with you. So you, that envy kicks in. So no, they not about to go to a rally and help you niggas out. And the first thing you'll do, if you lied on them, if you bore false witness about the great thing, why would you not sit right there, start and cite more of a fucking riot and a fucking fight and then blame Great Millstone? I can see you niggas right now. Oh, well, no, nah, it was Great Millstone, you know, because, you know, they're the apostles and the elders that rule well. they the elders of all of Great Mill. they the elders of all of Israel. You know what I'm saying? It, yeah, like, I can see you doing some, I can see, I can clearly see y'all niggas doing effeminate shit like that. So, the water, you how about Shemiah Shai for blessing us with the Chakwadash and allowing us to see the niggatry from miles away and just walk circumspectly. Let me get one last scripture. There it goes, right there. And this is the law. This is in the Thaw Ra, the Torah. This is Exodus chapter 23, verse 2, and it reads, Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil, neither shalt thou speak in any cause to decline after many to rest judgment. Yeah, and this right. I'm, let me get it also in NLT to the right. You must not follow the crowd in doing wrong. When you are called to testify in a dispute, do not be swayed by the crowd to twist justice. Yeah. And essentially, this I wasn't thinking about it, but it kind of reminds me of what happened when the Israelites in the wilderness during this era right here that, that the scripture was written. Moses went up to the mount to speak to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and get the commandments. These motherfucking wicked ass Jakes, our fathers, they pressed out Aaron, Moses' older brother. To make a golden calf so they can have something to worship because they didn't have enough faith to just sit the fuck down and wait. And, you know, Aaron caved in, you know, because, you know, realistically speaking, all right, there's a bunch of jakes right here. Like, you know, they might they might have tried to jump and they might try to put him to death or stone him. Who knows? But, yeah, like it's in a situation like that. I'm pretty sure, you know, it's just one of those things where it's like even in situations like that, when you striving for the masteries, you got to. You got to, you know, pray to your how about Shem and Shai for a way out if you if you fearful, but do your best to keep, you know, righteous. You can't let these motherfuckers sway you to doing the wrong thing because, you know, this is why Yahweh Shai said enter you in at the straight gate. You got to go through the narrow gate, not the broad one that leads to damnation. Don't let don't follow these idiots. Don't follow a multitude to do evil. And it's evil to go out there and get the ministry blamed and do something that you don't have to fucking do, thinking that you're going to be vindicated or you can just have a bunch of you know, Hebrew Israelites that you don't respect as brothers just help you just because we Israelites. Nah, that that's what happens when Jake's get so fucking caught up in finessing that they think everybody's fucking stupid. And it shows they don't got faith in your Yahweh Shai, but that's all right because Yahweh Shai, you're going to deal with any Jake that ain't in order. He's tired. Of, he's, he's not going to hold his tongue anymore concerning wickedness. 
But that's all I wanted to get for this one. Hopefully, this was edifying to the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel. Once again, I want to give all praises, honor, glories to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah, Bahasham, Racha HaKwadash. Double honors as always to the apostles and the elders and the sincere Akim of Great Millstone who rule well, who teach well, who we learn the truth from daily, whether you hear or forbear. And a sincere salutation as always to the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel, as well as the speckled bird, Israelite foreigners scattered among the heathen that look like the heathen. Kwam Yasharala and the Baba Ball. We almost out of here. Adawan Ratazar. Be circumspect and fall on out of multitude to do evil. Shalom.